So more, because you're predicated on long fights, and Undying loves long fights as long as he's alive. I don't know. I feel like I'm favoring Navi a bit here. I, I feel like I'm favoring Navi. I think as long as they don't just get wiped on lane somehow, it looks solid for them. Yeah, I uh, I think the this is a really sick uh, tombstone shard upgrade. You know, because the, yeah, the, the, the one downside is they don't have a save. But if he can get the shard, then they will have a save against the disruption arrow. Which creates even more problems to what you're talking about, right? The easy damage. I think Undyne's like the cornerstone of this game in a way. If VP can find him at the start of the fight or kill him in the tombstone fast, then the fight opens up a lot. But if he gets to just sit around there with Flesh Golem, tombstone save people, tombstone on a high ground, he's getting multiple decays off. That just seems like a nightmare for Kunkka Tidehunter to play. It's just not a fun fight. Speaking Stacking the, uh... also going to be really important here. Okay. Like this SD needs to get stacks for the tide, so he can just be ginormous. I mean, let's be real. We're talking about all this stuff, and it's probably all not going to matter because the game is going to draw out. Like some team's going to take advantage, of whatever, whatever. The game's going to end up drying out. It's going to end up being like a 50, 60, 70 minute game, and we're going to see the the PA holding out against Megas with. Divine Rapier, Revenant's Brooch, Dagger Spam, you know? Yeah, that's definitely possible. This is not exactly a lineup that deals well with that, probably, but I don't know if any lineup deals well with it. It's a holdout okay, game so we already, Navi. We already kind of talked about uh, the importance of lanes for uh, Virtus Pro, and we'll see. They're going to start off with an early disruption gush, so Malady's going to take a lot of damage at the very beginning. Uh, not the best start. And already start off with the Magic Wand triple branch build for Notice. Big fan of that when you're against a PA undying lane. Decent start. Our, uh, I'm still going to look towards mid, though, because I think... Yeah. I still think Kunkka should win this lane. We haven't really seen it in some of the recent matchups, and I'm not sure why. Because I don't see Puck. Like, he doesn't have the better spells, and he doesn't have the better base damage. And yeah, he's a ranged hero, but Kunkka generally just doesn't care. I feel like this should be Kunkka favorable. We'll see if Squad X can, can do something where the others have fallen. Maybe some so of it is just this really terrible cleave range on level one Tidebringer. We just watched it miss because Sanctity was like 25 units past the AoE. I mean, it's not too bad. I just think you should out CS him mainly, you know? Yeah. And you get a level advantage and then it compounds with the extra Tidebringer points. So that's what I'm looking at, but I think. Ultimately, most of these cores should farm. Oh, double courier snipe for Sayush? Wait, he didn't eat the tree! What? What? <laughs> well, could have gone for Omega it, with the against it. That was so much net worth for Yogi. Okay, a little missed opportunity. And save his tango. Giving a lot of soul XP to notice here as well. They're gonna man up, look for the kill. Yeah, try and catch him with a blood grenade, slowing down Sayush, but uh, he is behind the tower. He's good to go. Zombies are a bit ravenous, but Notice does have plenty of magic wand charges. Tough lane for the Tide. It's so hard to fight the regen advantage. It will go Navi's way for sure. What Kirtich? Doing fine as well. Terrorblade picks working out. Free farming. Early bracer for some regen. Yeah, that's a smart choice in this matchup, that's for sure. We'll see how he keeps getting along once they hit level three on Techies and Centaur. That's obviously a pretty massive difference when uh, you get this compounding upgrade in uh, magic damage. He's gearing up for it though. Like, he, he's. Building Wand, Raindrop, still has Fairy Fire, Bracer on top of it. A lot of survivability coming in for this Terrorblade. 
Might be able to live. Well, notice also living top, so... And DP are getting through these side lights. This is generally what you want to have happen versus these Undying lineups. Just not give away kills. Play a nice solid early game. You know, trade some farm, get some stacks up, whatever you gotta do. Man, mid's and going squad X. really well for Squad X. Yeah, he's pulling Deny. ahead. I don't even think this is as good as it can go, but this is where I... This is the area I expect it to, to go. Benji just playing with him. Yeah, he's got raindrops, so he's down to trade hits with science. Oh, we got the X mid. Radiance Big damage. He did. Go lift for it, too. Step lively now. Ooh, racking up some pressure here. Oh, that's a big cleave hit. He's got force yeah, on the base. Yeah, he just has to leave. Yeah. yeah this, is, this is a good lane. Nobody dying on the side lanes means nobody can refill your bottle. Tombstone behind the tower. This is an uh, interesting play. Malady is going to try and push the Tight Hunter back away from this creep wave that's dying under tower while also keeping the Shadow Demon at bay. Man, just pulling huh. melee creeps off, but no chance of hitting the range. And they are denying this Tide some XP, especially if this next wave dies. And they can keep him zoned off it, but as Tombstone's going down... It's some decent pressure, though. Like, you're looking at this Tide Hunter's net worth right now. It it does reflect in that. He's getting punished a bit. Yeah, he might I actually die for this one. Uh, he has Stick Charges and a Lotus, so he's not going to die so easily. Pops all that regen. It's a uh, quick decay, and he is more than healthy enough. No kills for Navi, but they're getting a free farm Phantom Assassin. Pressure mounting up in this bottom lane, Kiritich. He's got the healing salve, and he's really trying to hold on to these magic wand charges as well. 17 of them off of uh, all that pressure early on. They're also working their way through his raindrops. Six minute power rune coming up, and Squadix gets an amplified damage. That is going to be rough for Sanctity. Juicy rune. Can't keep his catapult alive though, so. We're to help him pull ahead in lane as he has pulled ahead for sure. Decent net worth gap. No stacks yet. I mean, there's a one stack on triangle from Sayush, but it's mirrored on the, oh, Kirtich. And the blast off, turn around, turn. get the damage on his Zayats. They gravely overestimated the kind of pressure they could put on that TB again with all those magic wand charges and those raindrops he can shrug off the combo pretty easily yeah he might as well for his lane it's paid off survived it gets a turn on kill now he's highest net worth in the game just like that and FNG going for the wisdom rune no blast off for this you might get it Ooh. Close. Gets stomped, misses out, has lots of leap charges. He's going to try and get out. He will not. He gets double-edged to death. So we'll trade him out. And XP advantage, Radiant. Tidehunter is getting to stay on lane a bit more. And it's mainly this mid-diff right now. Level advantage for the Kunkka. So can you use it for anything, or are you just going to farm? So far, I feel like Squad X just farmed in most of these games. Wouldn't be surprised to see the same here. They're making a move mid. I mean, this is a tough move. They're also making a move at top. They got him with the disruption arrow. Yuragi. Oh. Didn't have the range to jump to that creep that was dying, sadly. And we're going to go back to mid to see if they're... Uh... Their support rotation is actually going to work out with the Tombstone, but he's got the boat out already, so it's going to be hard to work through this guy. Lands the blast off, yes. Sayush is here, and he's got a disruption got coming up soon. Malady's just going to straight die to the tower, and they're going to pull back Zayat. Zayat, who to cleave a wanted to be able to get the Tidebringer hit, can't get it off of the zombies searching for it. Now his boat buff is God, running out. Live. He's got Decay on him as well. 
Ooh, Sanctity. He doesn't want to chase for that kill. Instead, he will try and get the Shadow Demon. Instead, with the Stampede, they will manage to run it down. But uh, certainly not the gank that Navi had in mind there. I mean, when I said that's a hard move, I meant it's a, it's a really hard move. Like, I just don't think you had the damage for it. You gave up a lot to make that. This top tower is just dying. Yeah. That was your Ragi got you pushed out of lane entirely by FNG. Very expensive move. Ravage up now as well. They just want this catapult dead, but... Yeah, they might even be able to kill him it. off of this Ravage! They got him! Oh, it goes from bad to worst for Na'Vi as now Nefrit makes this rotation. Fortunately, they land the Sticky Bomb. That Sticky Bomb lands the slow, lands the stun. They'll be able to get that kill thanks to it, but... FNG... Oh, no, he got baited into it. Goes for the Roshan Deny and gets that one. Nefrit oh tries to go for the double edge, but the raindrop blocks enough damage that instead Roshan wakes up and bashes FNG's head in. This early game is just not going Navi's way. And you gotta remember, I feel like like they have techies on dying. You don't wanna be losing early game with, with the support duo. BP getting away with it, they're gonna get some more stacks up. I mean, they're gonna have some scary team fight at this rate. And it is gonna be the Orchid build for Squadix. Feels like he's having a good enough game, he can go this anti-puck item. I, like the this. I think this Orchid build is so much better than Blade Mail for Bid Kunkka, personally. I get that you say it's like a timing thing. I just I just don't think that Bid Blade Mail is all that more is uh, is all that effective. I mean I don't I don't think it's good this game either. They have way too much just like casual poke and there's tombstone kiting and stuff. Like there's nothing you just go in and you're directly blade mailing, so. Yeah. I think the Orchid makes a lot of sense here. You also have Tide as a frontliner. So like when you play these double frontline lineups, you don't want to just be itemizing for tank on both heroes. You're just going to lack the damage. So this Orchid will give right. you some extra damage. It's pretty nice. A smoke move. Again, this move is just... That's a very hard move. It's like the hardest move they can make in this game. Smoking into the Kunkka, into the Triangle. It's not on the Terrorblade, it's not on... I mean, the Tidehunter is maybe not necessarily easier, but he's in an easier part of the map where the PA can connect to it. I don't know, they just... I feel like they're just running into the Kunkka brick wall, and... It is not yielded much. Radiance bottom tower is under yeah, I mean, they, they could always rotate to the TB lane, right? That's where your Centaur already is, who's one of your strongest heroes. Yeah. I think that's the easiest kill on the map, but they're just giving them free space, and... Yawaki is just staring at notice. I feel like at some point in time, even if they get this Tidehunter kill, it, it won't even be that worth for them, you know? I mean, Squad X is laughing all the way to the bank right now. It's just clearing through stacks, pushing towards this mega fast Orchid. And in insane efficiency for him right now. No, oh. <laughs> dude, are you getting the spectator lag again? No, that's just you know. Dude, I, it's the sign of Crownfall, I'm sure of it. Probably, yeah. Orchid done. Level almost 11 here. Big. It's gonna X to base for it, get it even faster. And they're gonna instant yeah, smoke it. off it. Smoke up. I mean, this is this is some fast VP gameplay where they hit a timing and they they know what they want. They may get it. Oh, they run into the techies. Managed to catch him just before he disappears into the trees. So that pick off. Oh, the orchid. He didn't do enough. They get him off the Tidebringer, finally. They get, they get it eventually. And Kiritich actually makes this mid-rotation. He did this last game with the Gyrocopter. I'm not sure if he, we saw a play like that uh, in game one, but seems to really take uh, this idea of hit an item, item timing, get the pick off, take that mid tower. Pretty value, honestly. 
he's not the one getting ganked bottom. Instead, he's taking an objective, gets to go back to jungle anyway. It doesn't cost him too much. Opens up the space. So now this Tide Hunter with Mage Slayer can just sit around mid. Be really obnoxious. You just can't go on him anymore. And Squad X can go hunting with the boys. They want to close out the map versus the PA. Is going back for that blade meal, by the way, just to spite you. Dyer are scanning. Boo. Well, okay, no, no, that's because he's he's gonna have to have a blade mail eventually anyway because of the PA revenants broach deal. Oh, that's you true. Know? Yeah, so, he's gearing up for the yeah, seventy yeah. minute base push. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's very inefficient to build a uh, a sixty minute blade mail, you know. So might as well build it now. I mean, why doesn't he just go Midas now then? If they're gearing up for the seventy minute PA base defense. You just go Midas. Well, you, you would be selling your Midas at 60 minutes, so that's not a No, you'd keep it so you can Midas the creep at 60 minutes for the tier 5 neutral. Ah, right, right. True. I forgot about that. Yeah. You Rocky. Oh, they're going to get close to him. Break his meld. Thanks to the Moonlight Shadow. Get right on top of him to pull him back into the Torrent Boat arrow combination. That's a nice find. And again, I think the map is getting here from VPs on point. Terrorblade's pushing out bottom with illusions. And just farming. The Tide Hunter City mid with this tower dead. They just can't go on him because of the early Mage Slayer. And the yeah, kill like, squad's fine in the Please PA. go on me. Is this is perfect map setup. And VP are reaping the rewards right now as they're getting a lot of net worth advantage and they're just going to smoke off that play top to try and find potentially Rocky when he respawn TP's out. Goes to triangle. But he's just walking back top. So they're going to look for the Centaur on this tower push bottom. This is a long smoke. I'm not sure I like going all the way across the map here, but it will probably connect. They'll get it and probably get the tower with the meta usage. So it's yeah, very it efficient up. for Kiritich's sake. That's for sure. Maybe not the yeah, team, the, but. The fact he stayed down here made that a lot better. And they're gonna try and go on a right, tide they, mid. They showed a million heroes bottom lane. They're like, surely we can kill this tide hunter now, guys. And they're probably right about that, though the fight may still not be good for them. As Torrent lands onto the Undying, they're going to be able to get that one kill. Can they get any more? The pullback onto the Axiragi gets the jump away to Zayats. Kill the Tombstone, at least. So, uh, an Undying for two and a Tombstone. Definitely value for Navi, but VP still gets something out of it. That was big for Yuragi. He got Battle Fury off that. Now he gets to clear through this Ancient stack uncontested. That's a huge win for him. Extra gold for Sanctity as well. And it freed up some map control bottom. They're gonna have to TP the Tide back and bought Ravage used as well. They found the X, found the Orchid. Is it enough damage? Puck having a rough one. Oh, the Stampede is actually gonna get him away. He is, if he face shift dodges the Purge, he's good. Now, that's the difference between the SD and the Marana follow up there. If that's the Marana, he's dead. Yeah. SD just yeah. doesn't do enough burst. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Yuragi's starting to catch up. A lot of ancients cleared. We did see the power of Tombstone in that mid fight. Like you just keep these big boys sitting under there. You're happy. A nice little pick off. Yeah, good. Good pick off protecting the high ground ward and We'll probably let them uh, finally take this safe lane tower that's been up forever. Oh, there is a big push coming in top lane. A lot of TB illusions with Shadow Demon illusions to tank for a siege wagon. Gonna trade towers a little bit here. I'll be happy about that though. This was a tower that was plaguing them for a while. I mean, they just want the PA BKB. That's like the biggest thing for them. You get that, you can actually take some fights around the tombstone, just going in trying to kill it, the first target. You see an opportunity here, though. The opportunity is actually Malady. They thought maybe they could go for the Shadow Demon, but a lane ward. Nicely placed. They know about it now, obviously, but uh, the D ward is actually going to get addressed already. So they drop more gold on it. That is the dream scenario. Find the Undying. You find him first, that fight is absolutely free. 
And Squad X is massive now, dude. He is... He's, he might be one of the most strong Kunkas I've seen in a long time. He's gonna have Orchid Blade Mail Phase Double Bracer Ags at like 21. His gold per minute is 583. Yeah, that's so damn solid. good. Trying to make sure the puck gets away. A TP to tier two from the Kunkka still thinks they can find Sanctity here. Uh, which he is close to being right. Actually might be right if he gets the blink. No, couldn't get the blink off of the X. Still has a chance to be able to get away though. Okay, he's gone. He's actually closer than I thought, but I'm still not a fan of that chase. I think it's just a low... I think it's a low probability play, you know. You gotta just yeah. push the lanes in, take away dire jungle. Your catch for puck is pretty limited this game. And every time this happens, Yuragi gets to farm some more camps, which is what Navi want right now. No harm, no foul, though. It, that's why I'm convinced it's gonna go 60 minutes, because it's a PA puck. Trying to keep these guys uh, from farming out on the map and Ooh, cutting waves and stuff like that is a pain in the ass. Somehow he got that X. That was absurdly good. He I'm just playing. tore so pick off on Nefrit. That was super clutch by Squadix. Look at the look at this smoke though from Navi. I mean, they, they kill the Centaur, but they show a bunch of heroes and they're gonna run into a Terra Blade here. TB with no Manta either. So the silence, it's gonna last a while. They're trying to hide away into the trees, get off the Sundry, but he can't get it off. Too many heroes disappearing and the mines will finish him off in the end. A really nice fog play and Ravage oh. for what? Why, yeah, why was the, he, the Kunkka was not close at all. Kunkka was looking I mean, for the tank. But that was, yeah, I, I feel like VP are just overestimating the damage without the proper follow up right now. Like, they might have it soon, but right now they don't. That's a very heads up smoke by Navi. Kill the Terrorblade, get the hell out, and buy space for their Phantom Assassin, who is now caught up and has finished BKB. Big moves. Moonlight Shadow use is FNG and Sayush tried to look for a uh, a kill together on the PA. Couldn't find it, so they just push in the wave. Could have gone for the Wisdom Rune, but uh, they didn't. So Wisdom Rune gets taken on both sides for Navi. Got coil onto the Marana is going for the kill. I thought the tide was coming through the portal, but notice decided not to. That's fine though. FNG survived. Lotus well, Mech now. Does not save him in the end. And now say you might die. Stampede slows him down for the blast off to be able to land. Got off the glimmer came to him now. So they are getting picked apart right now by Navi. Virtus Pro getting nothing really in the meantime outside of more farm on the TB. Lineup's just too clunky. Like their lane shove is very slow. They have these big meaty guys who want to take the five on five, but Navi's never going to give it to you. And you're just getting ratted. Ratted by the techies blowing up waves, ratted by PA Puck on the map you can't catch. TB illusions can help with it a bit, but. It's not what you want to have happening right now. And Ag's finished for the Kunkka. So 22 minutes. He is a god right now. They I mean, do this is still an have beatable team fight for us if they can get the team fight. Yeah. Like they hit Ravage into Torrent Storm. I don't know how you beat that right now, but this smoke across, if it was five seconds faster, they would happen upon the mid tormentor. As it is, they may still run into some heroes as Yuragi is going to be the one to found, but he has BKB. They get the anchor no onto the ravage. Undying, so they'll get him. Oh, they got the shard for the, the Undying, so there's that save that we were talking about. Doesn't save him here, but... It's a nice smoke. Like you said, a little faster, it's even better, but it's a solid idea. We're going to look for the catch on the other side. We'll find it here. Ags for Zyats, by the way. That's kind of crazy that really? he's that far. 
Can we get Torn Stormed into Oblivion? That's an interesting Axis game. Very interesting. I feel like their heroes don't need to move that much. You know? Well. Yeah, but the thing is, if you drop Tombstone in Minefield, uh -huh. like, what, what can you do with these triple melee cores, right? I guess? And it really I don't know. I feel like more likely if there's songs. just... There's a fight that occurs around Ravage Torrent Storm in like some area, in which case TB just kind of like pops his meta and stands there and hits people, you know? I think it's to secure Roche. I think your idea is you get this minefield, you have Tombstone. At some point, you go Roche and you, you plant that sign, and then you dare VP to come into you because you don't have any BKBs or anything. Hmm. I think if you get that sort of setup, it could be really good. Well, they're going to have to wait for second Roshan, it looks like, to make that play happen. As Virtus Pro are just going to force the Radiant Side Roche. They have a scan on it. They're going to smoke across the map. Can they get here in time? Are yeah, they're drawing down this mid. Looks like they know it's not fast enough. Yeah. Free Aegis. Which also means you wasted a smoke in a way. We're gonna set up maybe somebody TP's back here. That's our idea right now. Get some really good wards out. Pressure mid tower. And get some mines up, so. If VP go back into their triangle right now, it would be devastating. But they're just gonna push down bottom. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Well, what is Navi going to do to respond to this pressure? Because if they get this tier 2 for free, I imagine they're going to have a poke at high ground. You've got a TV anyway. You can at least throw illusions up there. In which case, you're going to be able to force somebody from Navi back. Yeah, he just has the Scotty timing too. Be really tempting to go high ground here with all this team fight behind him. Huh, we are not going back yet. We're going to try and push this uh, tier two top, but they're really, I mean, they do not have great tower damage. They can do Tormentor maybe, but Kirtsuch actually TP's back and that pushes Navi off of that objective pretty quickly. I might even be able to find him here though. Again, might be stumbling into the mines, might be be able to take a team fight away from the mines though, as they get the boat pull back onto the undying. Didn't oh, they're dragging them into the it. Stun there, and now they're running into the mines. Now they're running into the mine field, but the Terror Blade is still the strongest hero here. Does he see Yuragi here? Yuragi jumping in. Tombstone is out. He's trying to deal with that right now. The Ravage finally going down the BKB in response from the PA. But Kiritich is just too tough to deal with. With this, Scotty, they're nice going to go for everybody else. Nice stomp coming in from Nefrit with his BKB. Active Squad X. Oh, he's so low. Can he hit him with a double edge? Finally, Yuragi comes and commits and finally managed to finish off that TB off of the Aegis. Yes, but the Centaur gets that one kill. TP's away. Kiritich comes back on his second life. And now it's Navi's turn to disengage. Or are they really going to go for Kiritich here? He's got Manta. He might be able to get off this Sunder Disruption save. That might get him enough. Another silence. Manta goes off. What do you Sunder, though? He's got to Sunder the Techies for a little bit of HP, but that may just be enough. It's known as running after Zions. is going to finally finish him off. Where is that Puck? Trying to jump away to his orb, blinking out all of these low health heroes, but he's low too. Can't actually commit for any kills. I mean, that is the dream fight for Na'Vi, though. High ground tombstone that lives the entire duration and you drag them into mines. Like, that's an Aegis fight that basically ends up in a draw, I guess. Yeah, I don't know if, he, I don't know if Na'Vi like. are too sad about that outcome. Like, you wasted the Aegis and the puck lives. Sanctity got a lot off that. He had Arcane Rune that fight. He just went ham. The re-engage did not end up working out, but again, you're on VP side of the map. You wasted their Aegis period. We got another DD for the puck here as well. And he's starting to scale. He has Lincolns, he has Shard, he has Witchblade, Grove Bow, DD on top of it now. He's dealing some damage. Shield Rune, yeah, why not? Like, we're seeing his net worth even out a bit. That's just a very tough fight into the high ground tombstone. 
Yeah, perhaps just overestimating their strength with this Eye of Scotty, Aegis timing, just wanting a fight so badly, they'll take it on any terms. I don't even think Ravage will hit anybody, really. Hit the BKBPA yeah, I mean, and... That's kind of it. So they have to connect their their ults and control a bit better. Oh, this Lincoln is annoying. Somebody break is... it so they can get this Orchid. Are they going to be able to land this arrow? They got him. Nicely positioned. Some Moonlight Shadow allows them to sneak up on Sanctity, who has been in their face constantly cutting these waves. That's a huge kill. Gives him so Getting much Malady time as here. well, right as they hit their MKB timing. I mean, that fight might have gone even, but Kiritich was still the biggest beneficiary, I think, of the fight. And he went from Eye of Scotty to MKB super quickly. Okay, on the techies as well. Just running them down. I mean, you go high ground here? If they have had a creep wave, they don't have a wave, though. Damn. Cutting has been significant here as they're pushing towards the Phantom Assassin brooch. It's on the way. Stop for Conda first, but he gets that. He does some serious deeps to this Terror Blade. Yep. Nothing that prevents it. Just and BKB by time. I think that's Navi's oh, game plan right now. Yeah, but can you... I mean, this is the point where you really do want to go higher if you're, if you're VP, but it's just so terrifying. Like, you can't really casually do it. At the same time, you don't feel great about just random stuff happening on the map. Yeah. Smoke, Smoke up Navi. from Navi. They had a scan. A scan successful on both sides. Both teams know where the other is currently hiding. And it seems like Virtus Pro are the ones who don't want to take the fight right now. They actually back away despite holding having a high ground. And knowing where the enemy was. They're very close to Tidehunter VKB here. Mm. In fact, they're not far from the Terror Blade one as well. They're going to take the fight. Smoke wearing out for Navi. This is kind of an awkward position. Smoke, Moonlight, Shadow going back to their ward on the high ground. Will spot it on Dying. So they'll get that pick off. Always happy with it. Will allow them to have a go at high ground here with so many illusions. The damage is going to come really quickly. That tower Dude, falls fast, man. All you need is one pick off near the base. They have the wave coming in, too. Next one's going to yeah. get. Oh, that courier has a BKB. Oh, Full BKB okay. for the tide. Taken out here. That's value. But you don't have Glyph, and that wave did enough here. Yeah, the backdoor protection. Is it going to come up in time, maybe, with the glyph? Man, these glyphs How are long just... will it take? Ridiculous, dude. It doesn't that, come up in ridiculous. time to save the range barracks, but whatever. Like, the fact they save that there is just... It's so absurd, honestly. Yeah, I, it's the, uh, the hardest push in the game, right, is the first push into the high ground where you can get double glyphed. Like, the second you cut one wave, it's just the entire push is gone. And, man, that is that is absurd. But Navi survived. They're on their way to the brooch. Me if given half a chance. 300 gold off for your Augie here. So he will have it for the next fight. Which is why VP are trying to get to these BKBs right now. And I think they have them all, right? Yeah. So it's just the tide's dead on the courier. So in two minutes, they'll have triple core BKB. That is going to negate... Some of your Augie's effectiveness, for sure. If you're Nobby, you have to play for the longer fight. Poke and prod, get this tombstone into place where it can't be killed. Wear out the BKBs, and then that fight's yours at the end if you can survive to that point. The VP just want to jump people, man. Dyer's top tower is under attack. We slip into what also likes Nex Roshan. Nex Roshan would be... 
pretty juicy here for both teams. Yeah, the respawn time has started, so could be up right now. It's going to be a late Roshan, though. So Virtus Pro probably going to be sitting around this uh, this side of the map for a little while, and it's going to be late enough that it's going to be on the dire side. So Navi is actually going to be really well set up for this as uh, Zayas is already in position with a minefield sign in triple mines. So you can't go through the gate. That's a very good spawn for Navi. Such a late Roche, so nice for them right now. If you're VP, you're just kind of stuck here. Like, do you go high ground again? Yeah, you, I mean, could. you could. You know, there's send no the illusions after it. Might as well. It's going to be a smoke flank from Navi. Huge wraparound, but they do have the puck level 20 with Maelstrom and Arcane Rune plus Quiver. Ooh. So Sanctity's damage is power spiking right now. Oh, but they're going to miss because... Virtus Pro are like, well, Roshan's going to be on the other side. We don't want to go through the gate. So they're going to TP to tier two top, smoke up together, push up there to contest a dire side Roshan. So they have swapped places. And they lost the range racks to the illusions. So more map control going VP's way. Will be TPs from everybody on the side of Navi. And Tanky's going to be late here. He's going to be late, late, late. He's got the trouble minds. They see the Kunkka. Get the jump on him. Half health, but BKB goes off. Sayush almost dies there. Ravage being threatened by Notice, but they cannot save the Shadow Demon. He pops his BKB. Now they decide to back away from the Tombstone. They got BKBs out of him, though. Damn. Two BKBs from the Frontliners and a Shadow Demon buyback. And they held the one on the Phantom Assassin. Navi very happy with that. That Revenant's approach, timing that he's hit, level 20 as well. He can jump and commit to kill the Terror Blade when the BKB is down. Kiritich still has his, though. I mean, they're just waiting for another Tombstone and mining up. They're not afraid of too much right now. Send the Illusion, triggers the sign, that's value. That is pretty value, yeah. That does it. Time to fight or run. Well, at least, uh, time, uh, like that Yuragi's not wasting any time here, right? He pushed across the entire map, keeping his TP uh, in place, and he's farming up. So if you're going to have a stalemate, Yuragi's just going to get closer and closer to level 25. Oh, almost running into the minefield sign. Scary stuff. Nefrit gets his jump. Disruption has a response. Squadix half health and has to use his BKB already. Tombstone gone. Tombstone's going to be dealt with. Nefrit is going to be slowed down by the Scotty. Now Stampede goes off into the trees. He goes. He's able to get out. Malady cannot, though. That's going to the BKB done for Kiritich, though. Triggers the sign. Mm. They get out. Yeah, triggers the sign with the buybacks coming out from uh, Navi. They check inside the pit. Nobody there. Virtus Pro. Playing it very, very carefully, are not over committing to this objective. And time is, is in a way on their side because mid and bottom both are going to push in with range barracks. They have the map, but they don't have the, the cooldowns. Meta's out here. No terribly BKB. He's very susceptible. If you're Navi, you want to force it now, but you're walking into a Ravage, so you got to be careful. BA is going to do the Roshan in the meanwhile while they kind of push back against these heroes. Make sure that nobody's close enough to interrupt it. The arrow is going to get the vision, though. Sees that Roshan's at half HP. Moonlight Shadow going down. Kunkka spotted. Centaur not hitting anything off of it, though. Popping dust. Trying to get vision. Arrow oh, almost lands on Yuragi. They're going to smoke wrap all the way around. They may catch Virtus Pro on the low ground here. Kiritich almost has his BKB back up. Four seconds left on that one. Arrow, actually a great read from FNG. Spots the puck. Gets the jump, perhaps. The Ravage goes out, doesn't hit the puck, but they demolish the Centaur. He's already dead. 
BKB goes off from Kiritin. Oh, what a torrent landing on both supports. A perfect setup for Kiritin to damn. just run in. Doesn't need the meta. Now the Coil holding all these heroes in, but the PA isn't really doing much during this time. He got Yule Scepter up in the air. Now has to BKB TP up because everybody else is dead. I mean, Squad X just, just flat out outplayed him there. Super heads up arrow by FNG to scout that flank. Disrupts that entire play. That's a very different sequence if that arrow doesn't come out from FNG. But then Squad X just capitalizes, right? Use Ravage for the Centaur and a Torrent that connects on both supports in the back. Just seals the deal. No Tombstone out in that fight. No save. No hope. And then you get the Orchid on the Puck out of the phase shift. I mean, cannot ask for more there in terms of control from a mid Kunkka. That'll be Aegis on a Terrorblade. So now you can go higher. Oh, yeah. Squanix going back for the Wisdom Rune, funny enough. His bots. Will bots his way back in. And you got the mid racks while that was happening too. The extra creep pressure. You got that melee racks yeah. mid, so you're not too far off Megas here. Not a lot of buybacks <laughs> for Navi either. That is a that is a big tier four for uh, for Yuragi. Hey, when it comes to the base defense, he's got an ancient guardian. He's trying to get the divine rapier. Yeah. He's very close. Four hundred off. He'll find some bounty runes. That helps. Dude, it's almost to the point where it's like you kind of want to end before he gets to level 25 Divine Rapier on PA. I mean, because he has then the game starts getting very difficult. You have this butterfly timing on the Terrorblade, but if he just gets a lucky hit, it doesn't mean much. Yeah. I mean, yeah, if you're if you're VP, you want to go sooner rather than later. I'll get more evasion with Aviana's Feather. He has a lot of effective evasion right now. But that divine... 51% evasion. evasion. You also got the Ags on Puck. A lot more damage coming out of Sanctity. So these two damage dealers are getting to their scaling late game here. And it's very scary if you end up locked in an arena with them. They can actually output it. it. Like that jump and fight has to happen fast from VP. They do have the second blade mill on the tide. Notice going back for it, already gearing up for what he knows is coming. This has to be one of the, the more disgusting duos to play super late game against. Like Puck is just going to blink coil you and do a bunch of damage with, with no, no real threat to himself. Right, he just coil drops that one, does a bunch of auto attacks, and the PA is going to be daggering you over and over again while you're in that coil. That, that sounds so dumb. That sounds like a, the dumbest way to get a team wipe. Zero risk, only reward. I mean, you have to. That's why you have to use this Aegis. Like, you have two minutes on it. I feel like you have to send the TB in so you get to see something off them killing him. And then you take the fight. They finish up the hex for the Kunkka. That's a. Big piece of the puzzle this TB here. is all alone down here. If they confidently just push out with this smoke and run into Kiricic, they spot, they see him. Radiant Careful, Yuragi. Don't get Durachio'd. Blast off blind, catches him, instantly blows him off once. The team is, they're teleporting to the out. They're trying to get here. Are they going to be able to make it in time? The BKB goes out, trying to kill him with the physical damage. Gone off the Sunder onto Yuragi. Yuragi has to be careful of that. They blink back. They want to make sure they don't get caught by the Tidehunter. Got to the other side of the gate. Is that going to be enough for him? He's currently anchored. Can they get to him right now? Trying to deal with the anchor as quick as He's possible. Gone. They can't quite do it. He's dead. No buyback there. GG. Instant GG called out from Yuragi what? as a result. <laughs> Virtus Pro will end the game quickly. Just not of their own accord. That was the least expected ending to that game of all time, I believe. <laughs> yeah. I, okay, I mean, I thought that was going to go better for Navi. You kill that terror.